Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 4 of Zero to CSWP. My name is Lucas, and in this episode, we're going to be covering all the tools you need to evaluate your part, creating multi body parts, reference planes, and anything we missed in the previous videos so that you're ready for next week when we do the part 1 CSWP practice episode. For the practice episode, we're going to be using a part from Model Mania with the addition of global variables and equations in the drawing. If you don't know, Model Mania is a competition hosted every year at 3D Experience World where users are expected to create a part based off of a drawing with speed and accuracy. Over the past 21 years, this competition has been running, and there are 21 Model Mania parts to show for it. In the description, I'm going to put a link where you can find drawings and solution videos to every one of these parts. They're great practice for the CSWP and just for your general modeling ability. With that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Let's create a new part file to create the part from the drawing. Before we even get started, let's make sure we have the right units. Then, after that, we can create all the variables I listed in the drawing. We can create the variables with the same name and then make sure they evaluate to the given value. If there are any dimensions listed as an equation, such as a plus 10, it is best we define the 10 addition in the sketch dimension. For the sketch in this video, I'm going to go a bit faster and not explain everything as at this point, your sketching abilities should be improving. However, if you do find anything too confusing, leave a comment or email me. I would be happy to help. Then, let's create a sketch on the top plane. We can create a single sketch for the whole part, since the part is in the same plane. Then, we can use the contour selection tool with our one sketch to create multiple extrusions. Let's start creating a sketch. First, let's place the circles and fully define them using the dimensions given. Notice that when I assign a variable to the dimension, I use the equal sign. This means that the dimension will update when I change the global variable. Now that I have my circles defined, we can create the arcs in the top view. Remember, the order to make sketches in general is to first create the entities, add relations, and then add the dimensions. In this sketch, since it was more complex, I followed the order for the circles first and then the rest of the sketch. It is good to note, however, that if you were to create all of the entities first, including the arcs and the circles, that would be an acceptable way to model this. After I offset the arcs as per the dimension in the drawing, I can then use the trim tool to clean up the sketch, leaving a few contours or bounded sketch regions from which I can start to extrude from. Let's create an extrusion that will represent the cylindrical section. Let's set the end condition to blind, and then set the dimension for the thickness in the drawing. Then, so that we only extrude the circular sections, let's go to the Contours tab, 
and select the circular sections that we want. Be sure not to extrude anything else. Next, we can create another extrusion from the same sketch. We can select the sketch from the design tree and then select the extruded boss base. Then, we can select the contours we want to create a raised outside section and extrude them their dimension. Then lastly, we can select the center contours and extrude them accordingly. In the drawing of the actual Model Mania part, there are some fillets in the center section. However, in the drawing I am giving, we are going to skip over these for simplicity's sake. They are simply not in our drawing. Now that we have our part, let's try and change some of the variables we created at the start. I will list the dimensions to change on screen. Before you watch me do it, try it yourself. If the part was modeled correctly, then there should be no issues. Now take a look at my part and look how it looks after the changes. How do we know our parts are the same, or at least that you modeled yours correctly? Even more so, how will the exam which you take verify that you modeled the part correctly. To do this, we use evaluation tools. During part one of the CSWP, the majority of questions you will be given will relate to the mass of the part, either allowing you to select a multiple choice answer or type the answer, which would be the mass of the part. The question will give you a material to assign to the part, such as 6061 alloy aluminum, and then assuming the part is modeled correctly, the corresponding mass will be correct. Let's get into all the tools you will need to evaluate your part. Let's talk about assigning a material. To edit the material of a part, we can right click the part in the design tree, go to the material and select edit material. We see a variety of folders in which SOLIDWORKS holds different materials from steel, iron, aluminum, and other types of materials. The material list holds lots of information such as the physical properties that are relevant when simulating a part, for example, against a load. But for our case, only the density matters, which we can check here. Then, click a material and press apply to apply the material. For our part, let's use cast alloy steel. Now at this point, you want to find the mass of the part. You can use the mass property tool. If you remember from last episode, you added the tools toolbar to access the global equations and variables. In the same toolbar, we can access the mass properties tool. This lets us know everything about the mass properties of a part. For example, the mass, the volume, the center of mass, and other useful metrics such as the center of inertia, which are not included in the CSWP exam. If we need access to more precision in our display or to change units, we can select options select custom settings and change what we need in order to answer the question. Most likely, you will need to change your decimal accuracy. As well, in the top selection box, we can select what solid bodies are selected. In a single part, this is not very relevant, but in assemblies, this selection box may become relevant. So, we can see our mass. If yours is the same, good job, you mold the part correctly and in an exam situation would be able to have given the right answer. Let's take a look at another evaluation tool, the measure tool. This allows us to measure other properties of our part, such as distances between entities or part geometry, lengths, and surface area. For example, if I click on this face, I can get the surface area. If I then select this face, I can get the distance between each two. If I unselect both and then select these two circles, I can get the distance between them. I can select center to center or the maximum and minimum distance between them. This tool is best to
to validate dimensions in a part, and is sometimes used in SOLIDWORKS exams for answers, for example, when making a surface and trying to find the surface area. Now let's talk about planes. Any unique plane in math terms can be defined either using three points not collinear to each other, a line and a point not along that line, two coincident lines, or two parallel lines. However, of course, there are many more ways to define planes inside of SOLIDWORKS. We can select part geometry or sketch entities and add different relations, such as offsets or perpendicularity. However, to have the plane defined and thus be created, it must fulfill one of the four original conditions I just mentioned in some way. Now let's create a plane on the top face so that we can mirror our part to create a multi-body part. Let's select the mirror button and then select the plane we created as the plane to mirror. Instead of selecting the features we made, let's go to the Bodies tab and select the solid body we have. We can turn off Merge Solids to keep the two solid bodies separate. Once we are done, we can go to the Solid Bodies folder and we notice that there are two solid bodies, as per the mirror feature. Essentially, we now have two different parts inside of a single part. This can be useful for many things. For example, let's say we want two bolts running through these holes secured on each side by a nut. Then, this whole assembly of parts is never moving and is very similar. In this case, creating a multi-body part instead of an assembly, which we will look into in future videos, may be more beneficial. Thank you for watching part 4 of Zero to CSWP. I really hope you learned something. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at part 1 of the CSWP exam and doing a full practice run of everything you should know encapsulating everything we've learned over the past four videos into a practice part you can try for yourself. If you like the video, be sure to like, and if you want more SOLIDWORKS related content, be sure to subscribe. With that out of the way, I'll see you in the next video.